A very warm welcome to all of you who are worshiping with us on our online service. We're delighted that you are here and a special warm welcome to any of you who are visiting St. John's for the very first time. We are in a long lockdown and it's easy to get frustrated and disappointed and irritable. That is the nature of our humanity. But we remain an Easter people. This continues to be the Easter season, the season of our Lord's resurrection. So let us be so grateful for all of God's blessings to us. Mindful of those good things in our lives, let us quiet our hearts as we enter into the presence of our loving God and prepare to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another and walk in the way of his commandments, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God, Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world, God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love, a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. During my undergraduate studies, I spent my first two summer breaks working in landscaping and gardening. Fortunately, I had always loved gardening and horticulture growing up. I had made attempts to keep bonsai trees alive throughout the London winters, but every one of them became a pile of twigs. I had helped in tending our family garden, which always thrived, due entirely because of my mother. The garden was always a space of calmness, creativity, and new life. Yet working for a professional company was a different experience. I loved the horticulture and the creativity no less, but it was far from relaxing or calm. We worked with tight timelines and we had to be precise with our work. We were also an ecologically conscious company, and so we favored some of the more labor-intensive methods rather than quick fix chemical solutions or heavy equipment. On one particular day, my boss brought us to a gorgeous, tall, three-story home. It was a heritage home, and so the gardens and landscaping had that classic feeling with graceful, curving boxwood hedges and lush ivy over stone. We had with us the largest ladder I had ever seen, and he led us around to the back of the house. The back wall was a mass of vines and leaves, from the ground up to the eaves troughs and from one corner across to the other. It was a wisteria vine, and so it was supposed to produce purple flowers. But for the last three years, it had failed to produce any. The vine and leaves themselves held little visual appeal, and so it just looked like a mess. The homeowner had consulted with my boss, and after trying different fertilizers, they decided that the time had come to prune it back severely, to see whether it could be encouraged to produce new growth with flower buds. As a team, we lifted the enormous ladder up against the side of the house, and I made the mistake of asking, so who's going to climb to the top? And every set of eyes turned and looked right at me. That would be you, my boss said with a grin. With a small hand saw, a pair of garden clippers, and a large pair of two-handed loppers, I climbed to the top and started cutting away the vine from the wall, while the rest of the crew worked at the bottom. The vine had been growing for decades, and so the central trunk was as thick as a small tree, 
and all the offshoots were firmly gripping the bricks and the mortar in between. It was the filthiest job we had ever taken on, as dust and grime and mortar rained down on our heads and into our clothes. We worked for several hours, cutting and sawing and pulling the vine away from the wall, most of that time working with our hands and arms overhead. Aside from being the filthiest job, it was also the most exhausting. Eventually, we had the vine cut back to a quarter of what it had been, and so we cleaned up the debris and went on to the next project. A year later, and a whole bottle of fertilizer, we returned to that home and found that the vine had sent out fresh green shoots, and that on these new shoots were flower buds. Not yet in abundance, but enough to show that the plant was rejuvenating. The next year, I saw a picture of the vine, and it was no longer just vines and leaves and a few flower buds. It had become a mass of gorgeous purple flowers. Gardening can sometimes seem brutal. Cutting, pruning, fertilizing, and waiting. The waiting is often the hardest part as we look to see if our labors have worked or if it's all been for naught. In our reading this morning from the Gospel of John, we hear Jesus describing himself as the vine. I am the vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. As we hear this verse, we observe that even Jesus comes under the pruning shears. It's not just us. And perhaps even more interesting is that there is pruning regardless of whether or not the branches are producing fruit. If the branches do not produce fruit, they get pruned. And if they do produce fruit, they still get pruned to make them produce more fruit. Pruning and loss are a part of our ongoing lived reality. Regardless of who we are, and regardless of whether we like it or not, or whether we feel it is fair or not. At different times, we are all going to have the experience of feeling as though we are being pruned. It may be a light pruning, as we give up or lose something small or of minor consequence, or it may seem as if we've been pruned back severely, right down to the root, as we give up or lose something of greater importance. Has there been a time in your life when you've chosen to give up something or had it taken away and you've felt pruned or cut back? The good news for us is that it is God who is the vine grower. And when God prunes, it is not to cut us off or to bring us low or to make us less. It is to make us more. It is to empower us to bear greater fruit and it is to draw us more closely to Christ so that we may flourish. In the Gospel, we also read, Abide in me as I abide in you. The love of God in Jesus abides in us even before we know or acknowledge or accept that love. Heard a different way, As I abide in you, abide in me. Sometimes, amidst all the distractions and the temptations, it's easy for us to forget that our lives of faith call us to simply dwell in God, to be still and to know God, to abide in the God who is already present in us. Like the vine that is pruned to force the nutrients back towards the central trunk, we find our flourishing by being nearer to Jesus. Abide in me, as I abide in you. In the words from the epistle of John, beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, 
God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. As I abide in you, abide in me. We abide in the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord, a love that is poured out for all of creation without exception, a love that calls out to people of different status and stations, a love that spans time and place and across diversity of ethnicity and race, a love that embraces and celebrates different gender expressions and sexual orientations, a love for indigenous and non-indigenous peoples, a love that calls us to abide in Jesus. As the vine is interconnected with every leaf, flower, fruit, and new bud joined to every other, we too are all joined, one to another. This is the living church. This is our faith, that no matter the distance or time apart in the love of Jesus, we are never cut off. We are never isolated or alone. In Paul's letter to the Romans, he writes, I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Beloved, as members of Christ's body, the church, we remain together, always to the ends of the ages in the communion of all the saints in heaven and on earth. I move on today with a mixture of sadness and joy. Sadness that our time together has come to a close and that we are parting against the backdrop of COVID. But joy for the time that we have had, even with all the turbulence and challenge of the last year because of COVID. I also move on with deep gratitude for the trust that you have placed in me to be your priest and pastor, and to accompany each of you in your growth as disciples. My continued prayer for this wonderful parish community is this. Keep the faith. Celebrate change and renewal. Delight in difference and diversity. Keep making choices that help you to flourish and grow into the full stature of Jesus. Live with hope and love that abound without limit. And proclaim the good news that God abides in us and we in him. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lord of wisdom, Lord of truth, Lord of justice, Lord of mercy, walk beside us down the Till we see you in your glory. Striving to attain the light, Burning in a new direction, Entering a lonely place, Welcome.
after Lord in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. We pray first of all for the strength and courage of our parish to continue and thrive in this time of trial. And we give thanks for this modern technology which has enabled us to remain connected with each other despite our distancing. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the continuing leadership of our bishops Andrew and Kevin and Molly our priest in charge in leading their flock through dark valleys and steep hills toward the light of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give special thanks for the work and witness of our beloved curate, Reverend Benjamin Gillard, whose growth into ministry and priesthood we've been blessed to watch and accompany. We pray that God will guide and inspire him throughout his life in the service of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are undergoing natural devastation in St. Vincent and the overwhelming pandemic in India, Brazil, and other countries, and for all our healthcare, frontline, and essential workers in our community, that they will find the courage and wisdom to continue their work of research, healing, and enabling our daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, alone, or despairing, for those experiencing violence or injustice throughout the world, and for those who seek to preserve God's creation, our earthly home, this precious planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our loved ones whom we can no longer see, but who live in our hearts and now dwell with their savior in heaven, especially those we now name aloud or silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we give thanks and praise for our Lord's Easter sacrifice and his resurrection, believing and trusting his promise of life eternal with him in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. There are times in the life of a parish where we have to say goodbye to someone who is beloved to us. And it is time for this parish to say goodbye to our beloved curate, Benjamin Gillard. We have been so blessed by him. And to mark this leaving, I'd like to say a few words. The scriptures are filled with stories of people who have been called to move to new places. Abraham and Sarah, Mary and Joseph, Paul and Barnabas, Priscilla and Aquila. Filled with uncertainty about what lay ahead, these people of God could not have found their moves easy yet they were also filled with excitement, trusting that God was calling them and guiding them to a new place. And now you, our beloved friend Benjamin, are preparing to leave us and go to a new place, a new home and to a new church. As a part of this body of Christ over the past two years, you have given of yourself in ways that we have appreciated and will miss. We recall your steadfast faith, your love of God's people, your musical gifts, and deep desire to see this parish of St. John's move safely and well through a challenging time of pandemic and clergy transition. I am especially grateful for your loving support of me as I begin my new appointment here. We ask God's blessing upon you as we lift our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created the wide and wonderful world in which we live. We praise you for your constant care, for those who have trusted in you in ages past, who journeyed in faith to new lands of promise. 
We trust that now you will hold Benjamin securely in your hands as he too follows your call to a new chapter of his ministry. May he take with him a heart filled with your love and grace that those with whom he lives and works may see in him the face of Jesus Christ. Bless him that he may be a blessing. Guide him to a new church home where he may continue to grow in grace, in spirit, and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Benjamin, may God's richest blessings be with you. And now, gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are continuing to grow into a people of generosity and we are giving a proportion, a sacrificial proportion back to the work of God's church here in this parish and in the world, a proportion of what God has blessed us with. Thank you so much for continuing to be generous to your parish church in this challenging pandemic time. Thank you for keeping up with your envelopes, for signing up for pre-authorized giving and for giving via our website. We can tell you that every donation over $20 will receive a tax receipt. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the love and knowledge of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you all and those whom you love this Easter and always. Amen.